I compare loan.com. He's busy filming himself uh, as we speak, but we want to talk this morning, like Paul said, about mortgage reducing term assurance, but that's just part of the conversation. Well, resale transactions have been ticking upwards. On block fever has gripped uh, us once again. All this exuberance, does it have a downside? We always have a downside here on the Breakfast Club and 669-11938 is our number. Paul Ho joining us. Paul is the CEO of iCompareLoan.com. Morning, Paul. Paul, we are going to uh, you know, put a little dampener on this exuberance that seems to be gripping the market these days. On block fever, is there a downside to all of this? Hi, good morning, Keith. Uh, thanks for having me. Uh, Pleasure, always. Yeah, there is. Uh, a downside to having uh, this on block as, as well. Uh, there's some sentimental um, uh, properties being uh, being put on sale. People who have lived there for generations, mm -hmm. uh, people who who have moved there, perhaps in the hope of having this whole <coughs> uh, residential property going on block. Yeah, some some of them are actually looking for on block. They are serial <laughs> on blockers. <coughs> oh my goodness! And and these people are agitating for for change within every management committee. Mm -hmm. And there are also people who who move there for other reasons. They could have just renovated their place. Mm -hmm. After they renovated their place, and uh, what do they do? They said, "Oh no, it's on block." So they spend a few hundred thousand dollars renovating the place, and then they are hit with an on block, right? So after that happens, uh, because they have just bought the property recently and they are forced to exercise the sale of the property, then you, they will be hit with what we call the seller stamp duty. Okay. It can go as high as 12% uh, for the first year, 8% for the second year and 4% uh, for the third year. So, so you hit with, you're hit with a renovation cost and you're hit with uh, a cost of uh, seller stamp duty and after that you um, have to probably wait for between six months to a year. Maybe some could drag out longer, so you oh won't dear. actually get all your money up front. And you also have a loan to service at the same time. Correct. So, so while you are selling this property, you uh, you cannot actually go out to the market and buy another property unless you have the down payment for it. Right. And and you know for those people who just move house and then they they will be hit by all this cost. They're spending money on renovation and all these things. They won't have actually have a lot of extra uh, money, right? right? So so in an extreme case, they could potentially lose money from an unblock. Uh, but of course, uh, um, we have this case where I, I spoke to uh, someone who 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 unblocked the Shun Fu view. Right. And what happened to his case was he was hit with uh, renovation cost and, and seller stamp duty, right? Even though he still made money, but he's what he made was very, very, very little compared to everyone very else. Very hard to find an alternative accommodation. Uh, yeah, alternative as well. So what if you were moving there because of the one kilometer rule for, for your children's uh, primary school, school yeah. right. and, and you, you just realize that you, you're on block. So, so, you know, do you still meet the, the cutoff date for, you know, registering for 1KM and, and stuff like that? You know, I never thought of things like that. 669-11938 is our number. Paul Ho is also uh, in great demand by lots of management committees, hoping to go on block and other groups uh, trying to prevent all of this. It seems to be a very contentious process, This these on block sales, Paul. Yes, I, I think the, the process on on block uh, is very contentious uh, because of the sentimental value attached to some of these older developments. Right. And some of the developments are really beautiful, spacious. Uh, you know, that's what we grow up with. We associate it with all the spaciousness. And mm -hmm. suddenly there is an opportunity to make some money. You thought you could make some money from it. Right. But then you have to wait one year, two years before the money actually comes through. Um, then subsequently, when you start to go out to the marketplace to look for something and the, the property prices have all moved. Right. So you, you go through all the hassle of the you know, um, roller coaster of, of excitement and, and then to realize that hmm, you don't really is this make going, is that this much. Is perhaps going to put a dampener on people looking at uh, older developments uh, in things of that nature? I think uh, on block are still... 
Um, I mean, it only started this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, actually, some of it started last year, and it's only been been, you know, in the market awareness uh, this year. So, is it going to stop people from buying older properties? I don't think so. People mm-hmm. who will buy old properties buy it for the, those reasons that pro- most probably they buy it because space, the space, the right. space, the location, mm-hmm. the the environment, what they grow up with. Their parents stay there, right? right? Their friends stay there. Or they just want to be near to one kilometer from the schools, right? So they buy the bike for those reasons. It's not going to stop them from from buying older estates. But it may not stop the on block process from ticking along either. Exactly. Six six nine double one nine three eight is our number. If you uh, hear us in the background, we picked you up. Don't be frightened by me or Paul. Uh, we don't bite. Paul, uh, is there a way to hedge your bets? Nowadays, it seems if you buy an, into an older development, the likelihood that it may be on block is uh, pretty high, at least at this particular juncture in time. Is there any way to hedge your bets? Um, yeah, I mean, if you want to buy an on block property, there are certain things that make an older estate more attractive relative to the others, right? Mm-hmm. For example, uh, you can look at older properties or, or condominium projects that that are less likely to go on block. Okay, less likely to go on block. So let's talk about the locations. You know, there has been lots of buzz around the Bidadari, Upper Serangoon area. uh, And I believe lots of the old HUDC uh, developments seem to be pushing in this direction. But if developers, how much, how deep are these developers' pockets these days? I think a lot of developers uh, are sitting on on profits from the past years, um, so they are quite healthy, and their their property stock has uh, has run down. Mm-hmm. So uh, we are talking about um, in the past few years, we have a uh, supply in the pipeline of easily about fifty to sixty thousand in the pipeline, uh, as opposed to now we have about um, thirty five thousand condominiums from now until 2021-22 in the pipeline and about 7,000 ECs in the pipeline so it's a total of 42,000 in the pipeline Mm -hmm. and of this roughly around uh, 18,000 remain unsold right so remain unsold means you know these are the ones that are still unsold in in the pipeline right right. so of course there are others that they have bidded for the land and it's coming coming on On stream Um, but nonetheless the land bank or or, you know the the stock is running down right so they are sitting on profits and some of them who has started to move their properties last year this year so they would have uh, received their project project financing or project account would would be free up so the money would actually uh, go into their bank account so especially the bigger stronger developers uh, would have a lot of cash we're going to leave it there for the moment. When we come back, we'll talk about inheriting a property with baggage. What does that mean? We'll find out from Paul Ho. It always has a downside, inheritance or not. Uh, we will come back. Paul Ho is the CEO of iCompareLoan.com. If you have a comment or you want to participate in the discussion, give us a call. 669-11938. The Breakfast Club continues on 938 now, keeping you in the know and on the go. The Breakfast Club with Keith D'Souza.